Hello again! I took a break from making videos for physical and mental health reasons, but I'm back with another page for my backgrounds and props portfolio. I drew this interior a few years ago, rushing for a review event. For my current portfolio building, I'm expanding the visual design by drawing the props. It didn't have a character to start with, so I'm adding a lady traveler. Character design isn't really my priority, but a simple design will do. As long as her construction is clear, she'll help me keep track of the proportions, like heights for the windows and furniture. Off to the side, these grey boxes are my placeholders for the rows of props. First row will be the baskets. It's a category that comes in different shapes and designs. A Pinterest search spoils you with ideas. But they could be narrowed down by designing from big to small and making those silhouettes distinct from each other. I'm starting with broad shapes here before adding smaller details like rims and handles. The second row will contain furniture. The perspective on these props should be clearer since their shapes are more rigid. I avoided the angle already used in the interior since that would be redundant. Depending on the importance of the props, animators and 3D artists might require more angles and breakdowns. While incidental props might be self-explanatory enough to require one or two angles. The original spice rack looked awkward to use. The house shape looked whimsical, but I imagine it would be hard to take out a spice shaker from the top shelf. Back to basic it is. There was a bit of space next to it, so I added different spice containers. Anything to load this page up with objects? Third row is dedicated to draperies. I arranged the spacing of these folds based on big, medium, small to get an irregular fringe. If you've self-studied from cartoon layouts, then big, medium, small is likely an observation you've made or an instinct that you've already adapted. If you've received advice to play with proportions, then something to keep in mind is big, medium, small, not just in size variance but also in spacing and clustering. By the way, I'm working on Clip Studio Paint because it can create vector layers. They're different from Affinity Designer or Illustrator's vector layers. Clip Studio's vector layers are meant for line art. The basic eraser tool has these vector erase options, so I can erase excess lines at intersections. My line art brush is a solid textured brush. I increase the stabilization value for smoother results at the expense of speed, giving this draggy feeling while I'm inking. The style I'm going for is inspired by Gravity Falls, which also has this heavy hand-drawn line art. This basket is pretty much lifted from this production art. Well, the shape is almost copied, but I added more visual interest by upping the details to the point where the texture also chips away at the outline. Big, medium, small also comes into play with the textures. I didn't have to fully wrap the baskets with woven lines. Clusters of scales and hatches should be enough to get an idea of the material. Small clusters are made of two strokes, while big clusters are four to five strokes. Funnily enough, a segment from Art Attack shared the same trick with texturing. Neil Buchanan used a brick wall as an example, and it's a trick that has stuck with me since I was a kid. Let me know in the comments below if you've also come across that episode, so I'm not alone in feeling old. I referred to the old vegetable basket while drawing this new one. The rush and skill level I was in is more apparent here, but that vegetable arrangement was spot on. The old design was rough with how the ring and strands are just solid black lines. The isolated version should demonstrate how the ropes work to suspend it. I'm detailing these props assuming a storyboard would call for a focus on them. When I redraw these props back into the isometric view, which I'll do some other time, I'll be scaling the level of details down so the props could be cohesive together.
For this counter, I avoided long straight lines. It doesn't have to be extremely crooked. Subtle imperfections to the structure add up to the shape language. This would give the furniture a touch of whimsy and suggests its age or poor handicraft. The wood texture also calls for chipping away at the sides to break up smooth lines again. In contrast to the counter, straighter lines suggest a different story for the chest. The traveler would be more precious with this, so she keeps this at the back of the caravan, protected by the net. I modeled a basic spice rack in Blender because this was the most challenging prop. Despite being a small piece of woodwork, I had to imagine how the traveler could take out a spice shaker from it. I needed a better idea of the spacing, and it was faster to figure that out through 3D modeling rather than sketching. I took a screenshot of an angle that shows off that spacing between the bars and the backboard. That backboard reintroduces the house shape. The patterns on the curtains were inspired by this page from Witch Hat Atelier. After seeing those designs, I knew I'd be stuck in Pinterest searching for more. There could be a page dedicated to curtain pattern ideas, but I'm constraining myself to just this corner. I wanted simple floral patterns, because curtains might become animated elements. This caravan isn't for an actual cartoon, but I have to imagine that it is, and I'm solving prop design challenges. Here comes the shading. I filled everything with the 50% gray as a starting point for the values. The first pass is with an airbrush. I'm keeping this first pass in one layer, so I'm using the lasso tool to select areas and get sharp edges. On another layer, I brushed in some light grainy texture. My background instructor gave me this Photoshop brush, which Clip Studio can import. The effect I'm after is some roughness to surfaces, breaking away from that airbrushy quality. The highlights were added on the previous layer using my line art brush, but they could be rendered on another layer for editability. Keeping them in one layer, I can just edit through level adjustment. Later down the line, I actually added a layer for airbrushed highlights set to overlay. The light source is consistently to these props left side, which is a good angle to show the value range. Through the first airbrush pass, the form is established through the core shadows. If you've had to shade a ball for foundational classes, that's the principle I'm applying. Core shadow is the darkest area formed by the contour. The shading lightens towards the edge as bounce light affects the objects. My airbrush uses a pure black color, but I'm applying it lightly to get dark grays. I'm matching the lighting inside the caravan by going high contrast with the shading. It's characterized by moody shadows and directional lighting. I won't be coloring these props, so this is the last stage before finishing touches. But if you want to learn how I add color to black and white illustrations, I share my techniques in a previous video about background layouts. The rendering here might be more detailed than what's actually on Gravity Falls, but since I'd like to work on cartoons like that, attention to detail should be more apparent. Some official prop sheets might look rougher, but those are made by artists who already got the job. If you haven't worked in the industry before, it's better for original works to have a higher level of polish. To know what level to target, imitate the style of your favorite cartoon, movie, or Vistav artist then iterate on that style with a bit more polish, like stronger lighting or textures. Art directors can just instruct you to tone it down. Background and prop portfolios need works that show technical skills on perspective and clear construction. TV cartoons also look for clean lines, so ramp up that brush stabilization. If you're also studying cartoon styles, you'll also have to figure out how to optimize the workflow. Establish a process that outputs efficiently for an animation pipeline because speed is valuable in the industry. Time yourself and fail faster.
Like I've said in my sketchbook videos, simple props like these are good practice before designing bigger layouts. Work with a theme so the props could be arranged on a sheet like this as if they're part of a bigger project. Then you can put them together in a room or environment. When I was writing the script, I was worried that I was talking out of my butt. What I've been talking about comes from a collection of tutorials, lessons, and critiques. But now I can't say that my portfolio landed me a job for a TV cartoon. Yay! I can't say which cartoon because of NDA, and as production cycles go, it can take up to a year before it airs. I'll put a link in the description to the portfolio I sent, which is on ariancursedeart.com. I haven't finished every page that I planned yet, but what I have so far is enough for submitting to job ads. Those planned pages are still in my video idea list, but I'll have to adapt my channel to a busier schedule. Like I said earlier, I won't recreate the isometric view on this video. For now, I touched up the shading with an airbrush. The character should blend in with the background via shading. She's in between a couple of windows, so that's two light sources. And her core shadow is somewhere in the middle of her figure. Then I increased the lighting with an overlay layer to lessen the gloom. And with that, I'm calling this done. I hope this video gives you ideas for your portfolios, or maybe you simply enjoyed me talking and drawing. Either way, there's a like and subscribe button down there aching for a clicky click, and leave a comment if that's not too much trouble. Thanks for watching and bye!